Ratio test is the last test you need to know this year, the last convergence test of five. You need to know five separate convergence tests. First thing to know about is when you would use it. You don't want to, it's a complicated test, so you don't want to make it the first test you use. So in particular, you use it when you see a factorial in the formula for the series, or you see a mix of different types of functions. For example, this series here has a power function and two exponential functions. These are indicators that the best test to use is the ratio test. To give you a feeling for why it makes sense so you're not just memorizing the test, we'll start off by going back to the initial idea of what a series is. It's these terms separated by plus signs. So think back to the very first lab and the idea of the nth term divergence test. A series like this might converge. It only has a chance of converging if something is true about the successive terms. And I've given you a hint by writing that first term really large. So you can pause the video, and I recommend you pause the video a lot during this one. All right, so what would have to be true, what would have to be true for it to even have a chance of converging is that the terms get smaller and smaller and shrink, get closer and closer to what? They get closer and closer to zero. That's the nth term divergence test. If the terms don't do that, if the limit of the individual terms doesn't equal zero, then the series automatically diverges. So that idea leads us to understanding the ratio test. Now there is a proof to the ratio test. It's in your book, and if you're a future math major, you'd want to look at it. But otherwise, I don't think you should spend your time on it. So here we've represented a series that has a chance of converging. The terms are getting successively smaller and smaller and smaller and approaching zero. So let's look at a ratio of a term to the term before it. In other words, we create a fraction, a term to the term before it. So we'd look at a1 over a0, and then look at a2 over a1, and then look at a3 over a2. And we look at the limit of this ratio as we go further and further down the line of the series. And just use common sense. What would be a good ratio? What would be a good numerical value for this ratio? What would be bad? Right? Well, again, pause the video a lot during this video. It'd be good if this ratio is less than 1. Right? That means each successive term is smaller than the one before always, no matter how far you go. And it would be bad if this ratio is greater than 1. And that's really the ratio test in a nutshell. Again, that's not a proof. If you want to see the official proof, you should look in your book. All right, so here's the official statement of the ratio test. Because the terms might be positive or negative, we look at an absolute value of the ratio. This is their way of saying a term over the term before it. This is the nth term. This is the term that comes after it. So this is what we've written here in English. We're written here in math, term over the term before it. And we look at what this approach is, as then gets bigger and bigger and bigger, as we look at this one, then this one, then this one, and so forth. If that ratio, and then try to fill in these two blanks here. If that ratio is less than 1, what can you say about the series? And if that ratio is greater than 1, what can you say about the series? Well, if that ratio is less than 1, then the series converges. Nice and simple. Just the way you would want it to act. If that ratio is greater than 1, then the series diverges, of course. Again, nice and simple. Just the way you would want it to be. If the ratio equals 1, then this tells you nothing. The series might converge. It might diverge. You have to do something else. This tells you nothing. The ratio test creates some pretty tricky problems, so you want to use it really only for those types of series I mentioned at the beginning. And for example, if you use the ratio test on a p-series, it's possible to show, it's not too hard to show, that if you use it on a p-series, that you will always get a ratio equal to 1, and that will always tell you nothing. So that's why we use the p-series test. All right, here's an example. We're going to do three examples, because the ratio test creates some really tricky mathematics, and there are some shortcuts to doing it. So it really helps if you see several examples work. All right, here's the series we saw earlier. So we'll set up our ratio. We're looking at the limit as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And now it's a ratio. It's technically, it should have absolute value signs, but this is clearly an all-positive series, so I'm not going to write the absolute value signs. It's a ratio, so it's a big fraction. And since this function is a fraction, the formula is a fraction, it's going to be a fraction over a fraction. 
it's going to be this formula with n plus 1 written instead of n. That's the top of the ratio. The term, the, the second term, the after term, right? And you replace each n with an n plus 1. You have to use parentheses here, or the factorial part will be wrong. Then in the bottom, you write the nth term. Well, this is really easy. Don't overthink this part. You're just recopying the original formula. 2 to the n over n factorial. At first glance, this looks like some really crazy limit that you've never seen before. You may feel like you have no idea how to do this. If you want to pause the video and work this out for yourself and see if you can solve it, that's a really good exercise. And there's a trick to doing these, and I believe you use this trick pretty much every single problem when you use the ratio test. And that's what I would call to group the like parts together. See, that's got a base of a 2, and so does that. That's got a factorial, and so does that. So you're going to group those together. You're going to flip the bottom and multiply, right? just as you always do when you divide fractions. Flip the bottom and multiply, but then regroup the multiplication so the like parts are together. You can look at the original formula, and it tells you you've got two different parts, an exponential part and a factorial part. So let's see what that looks like. We're going to group the two parts together. That would create 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n. Multiply by, and then the factorial parts, will create n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Make sure you write it with the parentheses. All right, now there's you can see the advantage of grouping like parts together. This is going to simplify. So you use simple fraction arithmetic on that, and you get 2. Okay, subtract exponents when you divide. Now look at this. This may be something you can figure it out, and you should pause the video and try to simplify it. Um, but this is something that's not very hard, and once you've seen it done, uh, then it becomes an easy skill, and you realize, oh, this is your friend. This is easy to solve. And it comes from the meaning of factorial. n factorial means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and so on, all the way down till you get to 2 times 1 n plus 1 factorial means n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down until you get to 2 times 1. See how much is similar on the top and the bottom? This makes 1, this makes 1, this makes 1, all the way down, and all that's left is that. So this whole thing simplifies to limit as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger of 2 over n plus 1. That's a simple limit from last year. Very simple. It creates 0, which is less than 1. Therefore, this series converges. I want to show you a simpler way now to do this part, instead of writing all of this, how to simplify this and how most people would do it after they've done a few of these problems. They rewrite the, this. The top is still n factorial. And then they rewrite the bottom as n plus 1 times what's all this? What's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, so forth, n factorial. So you don't have to write all this out. If you understand that n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 by itself times n factorial, that makes it simpler. Then this makes a 1, and the whole thing winds up being the 1 over n plus 1, just as we did it the long way. All right, example 2. This is another series that was at the beginning of the video. This is the series that's uh, mixed, a mixed series. So let's do our, let's jump right into it and write our ratio. Again, I don't need the absolute value signs, it's all positive. Why don't we do this uh, this way? Since I know this formula is going in the bottom, let's get that out of the way first. All right, that's the nth term. So you just write the exact same formula on the bottom. And now you have to write it on top, but you have to be very careful, replace every n with n plus 1. So that's not n plus 1 squared, right? It's quantity n plus 1, and then the whole thing squared, times 2 to the n plus 1 plus 1, divided by 3 to the n plus 1. At first glance, this looks like a horrible rat's nest of a limit that you have no way of solving. So what do we do? We group the likes together. All right, so let's do this part first. n plus 1 squared over n squared. That's this. Creates those two together. 
right? And next, let's put this the stuff with the base of 2. So that's 2 to the n plus 2 over 2 to the n plus 1. You can see that's going to simplify very easily. And then finally, this part. And you want to be careful, right? You're, you, you're dividing fractions, so what you're doing is flipping the bottom and multiplying. So what's on the bottom of the bottom winds up in the top. And what's in the bottom of the top winds up in the bottom over here. So you have to be very careful you don't get these upside down. 3 to the n on top, 3 to the n plus 1 on the bottom. And again, you should be pausing the video right when I start and try it on your own. When you get stuck, come back to my video and keep continually pause and try to do the next part on your try to do each next part on your own. All right, let's go through to the end. This here, when you have this, when you have the same exponent on the top and bottom of a fraction it usually will simplify better if you write it as one big thing with the exponent just once. All right, then you simple fraction arithmetic for that, you get two, or uh, exponent arithmetic for that. Simple exponent arithmetic for that, you get one third. Easy, easy, and now let's look at this. It is possible to write this as two, fra two fractions, one plus one over n, and apply the limit, and you get 1. It's also possible to use our rules for limits uh, when you have a ratio of polynomials. Look at the term with the biggest exponent on the top and bottom, the most significant dominant term on the top and bottom, and that would be this and this. As n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that n dwarfs the plus 1, so this becomes more and more like n over n, so this 1, so this entire thing is 1 squared, which is 1. So the whole limit is 2 thirds which of course is less than one, therefore this series converges. All right, and now our final example is a new one that was not at the beginning of the video. Take a look at it, pause the video and try it on your own. We'll start it out the way we're supposed to. We won't write the absolute value signs because it's clearly an all positive series. All right, the nth term on the bottom first because that's easier. And then on the top I write every n replaced with an n plus 1. So watch how this works. n plus 1 quantity to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 quantity factorial. What do we do next? Because it looks so complicated, we group likes. All right, so n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n to the n. That's the part that this part that has n in the base and n in the exponent. Then we've flipped and multiplied, so this is n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. This still looks pretty complicated. This we've seen before, so I'm not worried about that, but this is tricky here. So we're going to do something, two things here to make this simpler to work with. Look at that n and that n. They're almost the same, but you, you've got the plus 1. So think back to your rules for exponents. What does it mean if you have two exponents added together? It means you could break this back, restore it to two things multiplied together. So let's do that. This is n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1 to the 1. Right? If we think of this as this was the result of two things multiplied together, the first had an exponent of n and the second had an exponent of 1. So you can test that, multiply these through e together with each other, and you'll get that. Divided by n to the n. Now look at this here. We've seen that before. This is n factorial over n plus 1 times n factorial, right? We saw that in the previous one. n factorial over n plus 1 times n factorial, and that makes a 1. And now look at how this is simplifying. n plus 1 on top, n plus 1 on the bottom, that makes a 1. And we just have this thing to worry about. So let's finish up by evaluating that. What did I say before? If you have the same exponent top and bottom of a fraction, try writing it as a single fraction with a single exponent, n plus 1 over n. We've actually seen this limit before, but we've seen it in a slightly different form. So let's write it that way, and maybe it'll jog your memory. This has two uh, terms in the numerator, so you could write it as two fractions, n over n, which is 1, plus 1 over n. 
all raised to the end. Do you recognize that integral? You may want to pause the video and see if you recognize that integral. That integral is e. If you forgot how to do it, you set it equal to l, take the natural log of both sides to get n out of the exponent. That's what you need to do when you have a limit with a variable in the exponent. So you set it equal to l, take the natural log of both sides, and then rewrite it as a fraction and use L'Hopital. We did that way back when we were doing limits. Well, this is e. Here's where you have to know the numerical value of e. Of course, 2.7, etc. right? 2.7, 1, 8, 2, 8, and it goes on and on and on, but it's definitely greater than 1. Therefore, that original series there diverges.